This can't be good. They have 11 of them. We have to get closer to see if we can hear what they're saying. I always felt you would make a good Shadow Brigade member when I followed your investigative journalism career. I still don't know what that means, but I'll take your word for it. I can taste it. The final relic is here. Let's connect with the others. We need to get a little closer. Let me be a decoy. chased by mobs for doing strange experiments. It's a long story. You know, underground cities, pots filled with acid, the usual. Wait, something's happening. The final relic is found! Ellen Chicken shall rise! The queen will be ours! All hail the master, the darkness, and the chaos! The master? Obsetons and Pisus? I don't think so. Something else is going on here. If it isn't the shadows, then who is the master? This Ellen Trekkend? Perhaps. I must contact the others. It seems that the battle is coming sooner than expected. Everyone, I know you're probably still in your dream world fighting to understand what is real and what isn't. You're probably in some big matchups in your league as you close in on the final six worthy enough to be the chosen one. I must warn you that once the twelfth relic is secured, your dream world will collapse. You'll be pulled into a war. It's up to us. I believe the artifacts are still bound to you, a design of the queen of the Aishi's seals. We must find a way to unlock the power to turn their weapon against them. Ellen Trekan will possibly damage our sanity. The Unseely might rip us to shreds. But remember, this is about preserving this dimension in order to reclaim the Green Bull and to return home and save everything. We must fight. We must prevail. It's crunch time. Prepare yourselves. Welcome to the quest for the Green Ball or the Truelli. We had a wild week with some major happenings, including the defending champs being knocked out of playoff position. There were some upsets as well, uh, with two first place teams falling uh, and no first place team up by more than a game as we head back to the divisional play now. The chaos didn't end there, though. We also had injuries to some big... Uh, Pretty big names, some big stars, and some last-minute trades that were accepted before the trade deadline that will affect our league. We'll discuss those trades later, but for now, let's jump right into the results, starting with our last... <laughs> when Risky Business travel to take on My Gosh Gia Sluz at the Fields of Ass Ligman.
This one was unfortunately not close for my slews as a Devon Achan injury and some big time underperformances allowed Risky Business to jump right back into playoff position with a 126.36 to 70.74 of beatdown. Cowboys defense continues to shine with seven more sacks, an interception, fumble recovery, and a touchdown. Jason Myers added 250 plus yard field goals, and Jameer Gibbs collected 95 yards and a score. Christian McCaffrey and Joe Mixon had 100 more yards and a touchdown, and Kyler Murray reached the end zone twice and added 214 passing yards and 51 rushing yards. George Kittle with his 89 yards and a touchdown. Brian Robinson with his 131 yards were some bright spots for my slews. Jared Goff had two scores, but three interceptions, and Austin Eckler struggled. The Browns defense did get three sacks and allowed just 10 points for another good performance by them. The highlighted players in this one both came up with surprising duds, well, at least for TJ Hawkinson, who had just 55 yards. Stephon Diggs was held to 27 yards, but it was up against a good Jets defense. It was still surprising to see Josh Allen not find ways to get Diggs the ball. Risky Business moves through 6-5 and five overall and is back in the top 6 with 3 weeks to go. Lagashkia Slews fall to 4-7 and seven and most likely need to win out and hope a few teams above them go 1-2 and two or 0-3. Oh Hey there, Risky Business checking in. Hope y'all having a great fantasy football season. Sorry for the loss last week, Anthony, but had to do it. Hopefully I can make this playoff push a reality, get in, and maybe get to the promised land. Jameer Gibbs counting on you a lot. So, but yeah, hope y'all have a great rest of the season. Good luck, and just maybe a little bit more luck to my team, and we'll see how it goes. That game was essentially a playoff game, as my slews are most likely not going to make the playoffs anymore. I need a lot to go my way, uh, but it doesn't guarantee that Risky Business is going to make the playoffs, but clearly their season would have been on life support with a loss. The other results are proof that you never know what's going to happen week in, week out. So let's get to them all in the best of the rest. Thor hosted the multiple scoregasms at the Pastures of Fardora, and it turned into a high-scoring game despite the multiple scoregasms leading throughout in a 120.18 to 103.2 win. Lebowski Thor had a chance on Monday night with Jalen Hurts back from his bye, but Hurts was held to just 150 passing yards and 29 rushing yards. He did have two touchdowns, but also threw a pick. Trevor Lawrence was a maniac for the scoregasms with four touchdowns, including two rushing scores, and Saquon Barkley came alive with 140 yards and two scores. James Cook also had over 100 yards and a touchdown, and Amon Ross St. Brown picked up 77 yards and a touchdown. Lebowski Thor had 118 yards and a score by Devin Singletary, and 121 yards and two touchdowns by Kelvin Ridley in his best game since week one. Tyler Bass added four field goals, including a 50-plus yarder. The scoregasms move to 5-6, and six, and Lebowski Thor falls to 3-8. and eight. The Siamese Dreamcats traveled to the Caves of Brown Diomir to take on Air Jordan and was able to run her win streak to two games with a 92.32-81.88 to 81.88 win. A.A. Ron Jones might be done for the season after a serious knee injury, which definitely hurts, but Brock Purdy continued to shine for a second week in a row with 333 passing yards and three touchdowns. Tony Pollard also finally found the end zone, and C.D. Lamb scored again. Romeo Dobbs added a touchdown as well, which obviously is going to help. Jordan Love had two scores for Eric Jordan, with one of them going to Dobbs, and Tank Dell continues to go off and added 149 yards and a score. Air Jordan falls to 4-7, and seven, while the Siamese Dreamcats move up to 4-7. and seven. And one of the bigger standings movers this past week, the Clash at Demon had traveled to Cascate Isle to take on the defending champion Elite Mother Tuckers and picked up an 83.2-82.5 to 82.5 win. Second week in a row, the Elite Mother Tuckers lose a super close one. Both teams had injuries here. Mark Andrews is done for the season at tight end for the clash at Demon Head, and Cooper Cup picked up a sprained ankle, though he is expected to play this next week, at least 
with the with what Sean McVay says early in the season. Josh Allen led the Clash at Demonette with 275 passing yards and three touchdowns. Jamar Chase added a score, and Jaden Reed collected 92 yards and a touchdown. The big thing here is that the elite Mother Tuckers had a lead going into Monday night with A.J. Brown going. The Clash at Demon had had Isaiah Pacheco. Surprisingly, Pacheco had 91 yards to Brown's 8. Justin Herbert led the Mother Tuckers with 260 passing yards, 73 rushing yards, and 2 scores. D.J. Moore added 96 yards and a touchdown. Clash at Demon had moves to 6-5 and five overall and is now in 5th place in the league. The elite Mother Tuckers fall to 6-5 and five and are now on the outside looking in as the 7th place overall team due to the tiebreaker. Banditos de Rio hosted the Stellar Bitches at the Deserts of Mechlu, and it was the Stellar Bitches who came away with the huge 98.84-70.48 win. The Bitches did lose Joe Burrow for the year after he threw a touchdown pass. Rashad White had another touchdown, and Keenan Allen once again shined with 116 yards and a score. Devontae Adams also came to life with 82 yards and a touchdown, and Dalton Schultz scored again as well. The Dolphins' defense finished with two sacks and three interceptions. Patrick Mahomes had two scores to lead Banditos, with one of those touchdowns going to Travis Kelsey. Mike Evans and Daryl Henderson also reached the end zone, but it wasn't enough. Both teams are now 7-4, with Banditos Del Rio leading the Flatlands of Scout Division by just one game over the Clash at Demonhead, and these stellar bitches are tied for first in the Peaks of Ulk Division. Lastly, in a battle of first-place teams, Green Acres travel to the Gotha of the Highlands to take on Remember the Titans. Remember the Titans pull off the huge 117.76 to 104.84 win to remain ahead of the stellar bitches by tiebreaker. Lamar Jackson had 264 passing yards, 54 rushing yards, and two touchdowns. David Montgomery had 98 yards and a score, and Brees Hall finished with 73 yards and a touchdown. Brandon Ayuk collected 156 yards and a touchdown, and DeAndre Swift clinched the win on Monday night with 107 yards and a score. Green Acres had 336 yards and two touchdowns by C.J. Stroud, though he did throw three picks. He also had two more touchdowns by Gus Edwards and 146 yards and a touchdown by Tyreek Hill. The Bills' defense also stepped up with six sacks, two interceptions, two fumble recoveries, and just six points allowed. Both teams are now 7-4. and four. Green Acres remains one game ahead of the defending champion Elite Mother Tuckers for first place in the wetlands of Arone Division. And that brings us to the two big trades on deadline day, both involving Banditos Del Rio. The first one had remembered the Titans sending Banditos wide receiver Debo Samuel and running back DeAndre Swift for wide receiver Deontay Johnson and tight end Sam Laporta. Remember the Titans, of course, gets his tight end that he needed, but he does give up two dynamic players in Samuel and Swift. Banditos wasn't done, though, as he sent Joshua Dobbs and Alexander Madison to the Stellar Bitches for Raheem Mostert. The Bitches, of course, get a replacement for Joe Burrow at quarterback and get a running back in Madison that can contribute at times. Banditos, with both trades, now upgraded his running backs with Swift and Mostert, and he gets a viable flex in Samuel. These trades will most likely factor into the final three weeks of the regular season and during the postseason, as all three of these teams are currently looking good to make it. It will be interesting to see how the newly acquired players do as we open divisional play yet again. Tomorrow we'll go over the next previews, including our final known game of the week, with the last two games of the regular season being flexed in based on how big the matchups are. And we may have division titles on the line in Week 14, which should give you an idea. Before you go, check out the updated league standings. Until next time, salut.